Regrets? I've had a few! Kick it! Hey, thanks for clicking the honest video. I have a lot to choose from. Thank you for spending some time here at Brian's Fun House. Uh, let me know in the comments below what your concert regrets are. Who do you miss seeing? Man, I should have seen them, but you didn't. Let me know below. Before we get to my top five concert regrets, quickly we're going to go what I've added into the big music collection here the last few weeks. Uh, first thing off the bat would be the When in Rome, The Promise. It's pretty much the only song that people know from When in Rome. Uh, it came out in 1988. It's their big single. Uh, to get an original, like, 12-inch or something, it's, it's like, 20 bucks or more. People go crazy for this song. So they have this nice purple uh, reissue on uh, on 45. You get, and I believe this is, like, the um, early, like, EP version of it. So, ooh. Uh, I bought this nice... I love when they do, like, two... Or I've even seen four, maybe... No, I'm thinking of something else. But two LPs on one CD. I like to get CDs. But I don't want tons of them. I already have tons of them. But So this is uh, Cheap Trick one-on-one. -on -one, and Next Position Please, both on one CD. I have all the Cheap Trick albums. But it's nice to get it on CD. One-on-one -on -one was their sixth album. Came out in 82. And Next Position Please was their seventh album. Came out following year 83. Another thing you don't see on CD all the time for some reason is the Wasp debut. Came out in 84. Had it on vinyl ever since 84. So it's nice to get that on CD. Now, this is one of my favorite punk albums of all time. What? What are you talking about? It's the Hanson Brothers. If you like punk rock, like the Ramones sped up kind of punk rock, and then songs 85% about hockey, the other 15% about girls and or beer, Hanson Brothers are the band for you. This is their first one, Gross Misconduct. Of course, if you know a little about the Hanson Brothers, obviously they're named for the character of Slapshot movie. But they are, uh, a lot of the guys are from No Means No, which is a... a Aggressive punk band from Canada and uh, you know they formed the Hanson Brothers just have a fun time and I'll tell you this is a great great band and a great album I love hockey I love punk rock what more can you want came out in uh, 1992 I believe and it's probably one of my favorite albums from 1992 speaking about a little punk a little pop punk face to face protection this is their one that came out on the fat label uh, 2016, I believe this is their 10th proper studio album. So if you like that nice pop punk, punk that you can kind of sing along to on Fat. Now it's not the same speed that a lot of Fat bands are, but it's, uh, I, I heard it's one of their cooler albums. So anxiously waiting to play that. And thanks for the download codes. I love it when people include a download code. Speaking about Fat Records, uh, talking about No Effects and Fat Mike. Um, I got I had this on CD when it came out, and I really like it. Some of the later No Effects stuff is kind of hit or miss with me. Like the early, early No Effects stuff is like sloppy. It's kind of fun, but then like Punk and Drublick, that era is perfect. Anyway, Wolf and Sheep Clothing is a great one, and this is their tenth album from 2006. Now, last year they came out with a single record. Right now they come out with a double record. That's what this one's called. I uh, have not listened to this one. I did like the single one, so I'm assuming the songs are kind of probably written in the same vein, kind of same thing as that. So uh, the double album, I'm sorry, that's what it's called. Just got that in the mail from uh, Fat Records. I like to order their stuff straight from them because it's inexpensive that way. Robin Cauley, great vocalist from a band called Grand Prix way back in the day. We're pretty big in England. I never really hit it too big here in the States. Uh, he sung with uh, Michael Shanker group for two, three albums. Did some solo stuff. This is his third proper solo album, Alive, just came out. Got it on CD. Uh, he's uh, Robin McCauley's one of my favorite singers. I got to meet him in Las Vegas. Really nice guy. Soviets, punk band from Minneapolis. Had this on vinyl when it came out. So I'm glad to have it now on CD. Just a few bucks from uh, Fat Records. It's their third album. And last but not least, with the new music added into the collection, trying to fill in all my holes for Ronnie James Dio, great singer. Of course, he did Elf, he did solo stuff, he did Black Sabbath, he did Rainbow, came back to Black Sabbath, more solo stuff, uh, but primarily the solo stuff. Um, this is Strange Highways, came out in 1993. This was a six album. A lot of people say this is not one of his greatest things, but hey, I still want to check it out. The guy's an amazing vocalist, so I'm glad to get that on vinyl. 
And the album he released right after that in 1996 is Angry Machines. Anxious to uh, hear that as well. Mid-90s Ronnie James Dio. Got that. And uh, recently, they put out this. The song of uh, the comic, rather, graphic novel of uh, his first album, Holy Diver. I think it's a story behind the album cover and why that priest was drowning. So, hey. All right, let's go with the top five concert regrets. Now, these are regrets of like, oh, I wish I would have seen them when. Not so much regrets of like what I saw when I saw Pink Floyd in uh, 1988 in May, where people had slept on the streets to get tickets, and then they got tickets, and then they wait. You know, Pink Floyd had not really played since the Wall Tour. Roger Waters left. Oh, they're getting back together. Well, without Roger, hey, let's still go see him. Momentary lapse of reason tour. Let's do it. And uh, they opened up a Shine On Crazy Diamond. And like 30 seconds into that song, I'm this high school kid, and I look around me, and like 40% of the crowd is, uh, <laughs> is that a pig? <laughs> uh, like they just, a little drinking, a little smoking, a little pill popping, I don't know what it was, but that crowd was passed out. I'm like, you guys! This is Pink Floyd. Let's, let's rock out. <laughs> a little bit too much rock out. So not regrets like that. Like, oh, I did way too much of that show. But regrets of just bands you didn't go see. Uh, of course, all lists have to have honorary mentions. My honorary mention is the Sex Pistols. One of my little favorite bands. They just come out with one record. Although they've had tons of, like, compilation and reworking and whatever. But they had one record. And they made such a huge impact on the world of rock and roll. So the Sex Pistols came to Chicago in August 1996. Unfortunately, I was on the road with the band I was playing at the time, and I missed it, the filthy, lucrative tour. And it would have been great to hear them play songs off of this record live and see Mr. John Lydon. I saw him years later fronting Pill, but it would have been really cool to see the Sex Pistols. So honorary mention to this list is I regret not seeing in 1996 the Sex Pistols. Also keeping in that mind, Punk Rock 1996, this band came through in April. The Ramones, I wish I would have seen them. What was I thinking? All my punk friends were going. Actually, the big show that all my punk friends went to is 1992. They played the Aragon Ballroom. It was the Ramones. Opening up was Overwhelming Color Fast, my favorite bands from this whole Seattle era kind of thing. Uh, really good poppy rock band, Overwhelming Color Fast great band check them out and social distortion another band i like uh they were opening up and the ramones were killing it on halloween this is from 1977 i'm just showing this is because it's a record channel and uh you know these early ramones shows are really really cool that's some good stuff so if you see these albums a lot of them came out on like a record store day type things but if you see them still sitting around pick them up it's good stuff and uh, so anyway, so they came through in 92, didn't go see them, came through again, 96, didn't go see them. Then fortunately we lost Joey Ramone and there's just no more Ramones. And kicking myself to this day, when all my little punk friends get together and talk about shows they saw, they always throw in a few Ramones show and hear me, oh, yeah, I never, never got to see the Ramones live. I suck. Number four, the police, where? No, the police, the band, oh. How did I miss this? It kicked off the Synchronicity Tour. Synchronicity, this record, of course, there's like lots of versions of which ones have which pictures, and then some claim that you can pull the vinyl out, and it's kind of, you can see through it, or it's purpley, or whatever. I just got like, you know, black. The black one. A little more blacker than that. So they kicked off the Synchronicity Tour at Comiskey Park, which is where the Chicago White Sox play in 1983 and they came back in 84 to the Rosemont Horizon where I saw a ton of shows starting around 85, 86. Oh, I wish I would have gone in 84 because I've seen the police. What would many say touring off of their greatest record? I tell you, there is a synchronicity tour of Zared on MTV, then on VHS, then on DVD, and I tell you, watch it. It brings the 80s and the police and everything awesome about rock and roll. Cheesy outfits worn by Sting, though, but it was really good stuff. So, whatever, I'm a kid. Screw up. You're a kid. You're allowed to make mistakes. They come back, reunite in 2008, and play the Rosemont Horizon again. 2008. And what was I doing? I was living uh, 15 minutes down the road. Rosemont Horizon is probably uh, 12 minutes if I'm speeding. 
And uh, I was just like, I don't know, you know, Sting's like, what, like 55 years old. I don't see some old guy up on, I don't know, I'm just going to pass. They'll probably do it again anyway. Stupid. It's my last and only chance. They're never getting back together again. So yeah, number four, rather, regret uh, not seeing the police. Speaking about that, maybe you got to talk about Culture Club and Boy George hit it. You see him on MTV. At first, you're like, hey, she's kind of cute. Oh, it's a dude. Oh, not for me. But uh, anyway, it's like, you were like, oh, it's kind of catchy. I, I was like a, um, a weird word choice, but a closet culture club fan. Because I was into heavy metal at that point. I didn't really want to let my friends know how catchy I thought, like, how my chameleon was, and I'll tumble for you in time, and Churchill Poison Mine, and all those great culture club songs. So my sister was way into them. And um, in 84, in uh, November, so you could wear all the layered look and you know it's freezing outside so you need the layers you'd look like boy you could dress up like boy george in uh november in 1984 they were touring for this album which isn't my favorite culture club album i like the really early early stuff and there's a movie oh hold on worried about the boy it didn't really come out too much in america but you can get it on dvd that'll play in american uh dvd players and it's about the early years of boy george and all the crap he took and you just get a great appreciation of what he had to go through uh, you know, he was in uh, Bow Wow Wow for like a hot minute, and then boom, he's like, yeah, I'm just going to do my own thing, and boom, become Culture Club, one of the hugest bands of the 80s in the MTV early generation, and uh, so that's a great movie. Anyway, so they were touring off of this album, which wasn't really my favorite, it didn't really have a lot of the songs that I really, really wanted, but anyway, I would have been able to see Boy George in 1984 and all, all the glory. Now, to kind of make up for that, at Flea Market not too long ago, I was able to pick up the tour program and I think I'm going to do a video about my tour programs that I've picked up throughout the years the ones I've gotten at the actual shows and ones I've just picked up so you, you have the uh, tour program was it called a kiss across the ocean or something uh, a kiss across the ocean was that tour and um, so you know I wasn't at the show but I did get the see the tour pro I actually picked up a culture I don't know if it was my sister's one that she got the concert but I stole a Culture Club shirt. I used to wear it all at punk shows all the time. Show how edgy I was. I used to wear a Culture Club shirt all the time. And I think it was from this tour. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a cool program. I love tour programs, man. It's one of the things. There's boy. You get a boy. Boy in the Georges. Look at that. Good stuff. So yeah, didn't get to see them then. But there's a light at the end of the tunnel on this one. In 2016, they come and they play the historic Chicago Theater. And I tell you, I jumped on those tickets, went, had a blast. Boy George came out, not looking like that. It looked like some employee worked that, like, hot dog on a stick or something. Uh, what are you talking about, hot dog on a stick? You know, hot dog on a stick. It looked like some dude that worked there comes out on stage. But they played a hell of a show, man. And this dude who is uh, next to me, a little younger than me, and uh, his wife was sitting next to him. My wife was sitting next to me. You know, after like the first two songs, he's kind of tapping his foot a little bit. And after the third or fourth song, he's like, oh, what the hell? He's all dancing. I'm like, yeah, dude, it's Culture Club. Just break loose. Have the time of your life. It's 2016. Boy, George is still alive. Uh, it was a great show. It was a really good show. So number three is regret not seeing Culture Club in the 80s. Number two is Queen. This is probably one of the first ten albums I ever got was Queen's greatest hits. I know my first albums, I think I did a video on my first five or something. It was like ACDC, Porridge, Rush 2112, Cheap Trick Dream Place, Journey, Infinity. But anyway, so I played the hell out of this. And for some reason, kind of like Culture Club, I didn't want to admit to like all my heavy metal, hard rock friends that I was way into Queen. Um, I don't know, it seems weird nowadays, but back then, it was different times and you know, you're trying to be cool. Although, really, why? But uh, So I was like, yeah, you know, I don't know. I would never see them. So uh, I think my sister again was like, I might go see them. Is anyone interested? And her friend, like, anyone interested? I don't want to go see them. And that was um, 1982 on the Hot Space Tour. Uh, my first concert was 81 seeing Cheap Tricks. So I was already seeing concerts. And uh, a year later, yeah, on the Hot Space Tour, Queen was coming around playing Popular Creek in the Chicago area, and I was just like, now nah, I'm going to pass. <laughs> what a mistake. A few years after that, I had to work, and I come home, and MTV's playing highlights of uh, Live Aid, and I'm like, oh, I should have saw that, man. Oh, what was I thinking? So, again, somewhat of a little light at the end of the tunnel, 
Fast forward 32 years later, of course we lose Freddy. Uh, in June 2014, I go see Queen, which is Brian and Roger with uh, Adam Lambert singing. Did a great job. It's fun. He did you know a little bit of his style, a bit of kind of style of Freddy. It was great. The crowd it was one of the most sing along crowds I've ever heard. Sometimes people were openly crying because they just loved the music so much. So it was awesome for that. Uh, one of my favorite songs of all time. I might do a video of like top five songs of all time, whatever. Under Pressure. What an emotional, great song. Glad to have that 12 inch. So yeah, it was a good show. They just put Queen tickets on sale now, but like everything, all the scalpers are taking them away and Ticketmaster fees and you know, everything is really making everything suck in society. Let's all not be that way. Why do we have to flip everything and scalp everything and money, money, money? I, I digress, but I was glad to see a lot of shows at a time that you didn't have to worry about a lot of that crap. But anyway, number two regret is not seeing Queen with Freddie Mercury. Along those lines of, wow, that singer is so amazing. Why didn't I go see him back in the day? Of course, Steve Perry, I'm talking about Journey. I did not go see Journey when it came through Chicago in 83. They played the Rosemont Horizon for three nights, I believe. And they had a few lineup changes, you know. The, some newer people were brought in in 86. They came around again. And I tell you, 83, they would have been touring on this baby. Mine's a little scuffed up copy, but separate ways. Send her my love. Faithfully. Oh. And then in 86, they would have been uh, touring on Raised on Radio. It has uh, Be Good to Yourself is probably my favorite song off of this one. But So again, to kind of like years later for the 83 tour, I bought this at Flea Market's tour program. I kind of pretend I was there. Really not really, but I was, oh yeah, I'd have been there. And oh, I mean, this is just a classic lineup with them. What was it Steve Smith on drums? Look at that man. I would have been wearing a shirt just like Steve Perry, cheesy 80s shirt, rocking out at the uh, Rosemont Horizon. And I didn't go. I think, again, like Culture Club, like Queen, you know, I didn't want to be too crazy about Journey because they weren't ACDC or Black Sabbath or Ozzy. They were Journey, you know, girly rock, but. Man, was I dumb. So I'm kicking myself. And speaking about Journey, this is one of my favorite Journey albums, and it does not get the love of, like, you know, 81 Journey's Escape. It is crazy, great album. Uh, this is Dream After Dream. It came out in 80, and it's got Greg Rowley on it still. And Steve Perry, of course. And it's just a great album. And, uh, yeah, it's just, it's not get the same love as a lot of the other Journey albums get, but... Anyway, I really, really regret not seeing Steve Perry up there singing away. That would have been so cool to see Journey way back in the day. Fast forward, again, a little glimmering light at the end of my rock and roll shame tunnel. I did see Journey. I can't remember when. I saw them at Tinley Park and Big Outdoor Stamp. Maybe 2016, maybe 2017 or 18, I don't know. But recently I saw them with, uh, what's that guy, Arnell? And uh, it is a great job. It sounds great. The songs sound like kind of how they did, but man, it would have been great to in the 80s. So number one regret, me not seeing a Steve Perry-fronted journey. Thanks for watching.